And this meeting was new, was foreign to the Sahaba, those who were even the Arabic speakers. This was a foreign term to them at that time. So they so asked, asked Rasulullah, so I thought, yeah, so what, 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 what is one? What is one? We never heard of it. What is one? Rasulullah said, so and, and, and I believe, in my assessment, in my humble assessment, this is the root of all of our problems. All of our problems. Spiritual, political, social, family, personal, even health. This is the root of all our problems, the root of all the cancers. This is very important. Please pay attention. Rasulullah said, "But dunya wa kawabu the love of this life and hatred of death. Who amongst us loves to die? Does anybody want to raise raise? Who amongst us loves to die? No one wants to raise raise. Who amongst us loves to live? Raise your hand. You can respond to that. Please, please raise your raise hand, hand if you love, love it. To please raise, raise your hand. hand. <coughs> you can respond to that when you ask answers. answers. You, you can raise your hand. Nobody, Nobody else loves to live. Nobody else really. Everybody loves to live. Everybody Everybody loves Everybody loves loves to live. Allah Allah made us this place. That we love to live. You don't want to die. This is the root of all our problems. This is the root of all our problems. This is love, love, life, and but it is not this natural law of love and hatred of death which I'm talking about. Or which most of us are He's talking about something else. What is he talking about? What can you make this life the objective of your 60, 70 years of this earth? That is the problem of most of us that we see in and because, and because you, you amass so much luxury of this life, life so much so love of this life, life, it is hard for you to disconnect when it comes to that. When your when time, time of death, death approaches, approaches and the reality has been made clear to you, clear to you that their, their possessions, possessions are really no longer your possessions, possessions that point of termination of your ownership upon your very own things which you cherish, cherish to disconnect. To disconnect that is why you hate to die, because you do not want to give up what you have to ask us. If, 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 if I tell you, you to go home now and donate and your two houses or three houses to charity, charity. right now, right now would any of us be able to do it? For those of us who have multiple cars, or condos, or houses, house, house, uh, or cars, cars, cars. luxury cars. Luxury cars. Would you, would you be, be able, able to, at this distance, cut your ownership? No. no. What no. makes you think when the angel of death knocks? No. Stay no. ready, ready. The angel of death will not knock for us. The only the person who knocked for was the Nazi Yad, and also was the last person. was the last person, he sought permission to take his life. But figure it out. When medical health of the death comes, the angel of death comes to knock on your door. And it is time for you to give up your possession. Do you think we'll be able to do it? Are you going to tell us what? No. And that is why we do not wish you to die. We dislike to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are afraid to disconnect from our possessions. It is in our heart. It is not really in our hands. It is in our heart. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he was asked by one of the students, what do you say about pursuing wealth? Nothing wrong about pursuing wealth and the luxuries of this life as long as you keep these luxuries in your hand and not in your heart. This was Imam Abu Hanifa's response. As long as the wealth is in your hand and not in your heart. As long as you are a master of the wealth and you have not become a slave to your wealth. As long as the pursuits of this life, you are in control of it and they are not in control of you. Many of us, we cannot control our tongues, meaning when it comes to eat. We become slaves to our tongues. The food that we eat, we cannot control it. Even when the doctor tells us, you have diabetes, you have cholesterol, you have to watch what you eat. You cannot eat one, three, one, two, three, four, five, four, four, five, and you have to eat one, two, three, four, five. Even then, it becomes very hard for the patients to follow the doctor's advice and guidelines because they have become a servant of their tongue. I myself included. I am a servant of my tongue. 
Meaning, whatever my tongue likes to eat, if it's tasty, I'll eat it. As long as Allah made it halal, I'll eat it. Even when, when it comes to harming your health, I still cannot give it up. Likewise, when the life, your life, and your money, and your bank account, and your possessions, and your family, and your education, and your career becomes like this, then it is a problem. Why don't you go home? and make a list of your objective, what you plan for the next year, just the next year, the next year. July 5, 2020, until 2021. Write out what your plans are. Any plan that you have, any objective, your goals, what you intend to achieve by the next year. And you can count perhaps 90% of them if not, may Allah protect us, 100% of them will be related to purely this lesson and nothing for the other. Nothing to further the objective of, of, of this life, which is to worship Allah and attain Jannah and to be successful by being protected from the hellfire. Whomsoever escapes the hellfire by Allah's mercy, he is the one who has Jannah and is entered into paradise. He is the one who is successful, but our metrics for success in this life is different. And that is why we have become slaves to the love of this life. And remember that whomsoever loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves to meet him. And whomsoever dislikes to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah does not wish to meet him. مَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ أَجَلَ اللَّهِ لَأَدْ Whoever seeks to meet Allah, hopes for the day of meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter, فَإِنَّ أَجَلَ اللَّهِ لَأَدْ That the appointed time of your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after your death is coming. It is coming. Allah is indicating to those who wish to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, just be patient, your time is coming, your time of war is coming. Likewise to those who are afraid to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they have not prepared to meet with Him, because of this life, because of the love of this life, also they have to wait. They cannot delay it by even an hour or bring it early. Or even bring it earlier by an hour. This is the reality of this lesson. And if we look, at our hearts, and we be absolutely honest with ourselves. Absolutely honest with ourselves. Sometimes we even love our material possessions more than we love our own parents. Is it, is it not that case sometimes? That is the case sometimes. That is the sad case. We even love our material possessions sometimes even more than our own family members. But this dunya is such a source of conflict. This dunya. The word adna is also related to the word dunya, which means the lowest of the lowest things. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this dunya has absolutely no worth. And this is the same dunya that we love and run after all the time. Rasulullah says that if this dunya had even the worth, I am skipping the Arabic hadith for, uh, for you know, time constraints. But if this dunya was even worth the value of a, a wing of a mosquito, if Allah gave so much worth to this dunya equal to a wing of a mosquito, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not allow the disbelievers to drink water on this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, water is the most important thing that a human body needs. It can live without food for many days, for up to a week, maybe more. But for three days, more than that, you will survive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if He gave worth, worth a mosquito's wing, to this life, you would not let those who oppose the truth to even drink one drop of water. Imagine this. Imagine this. What kind of worth do you think? What kind of nonsense, insignificant things are we running after for 60, 70 years of life? And at the end of the day, it is just as insignificant as a fruit fly or a, a mosquito. And Look what Rasulullah said. He didn't say as insignificant as a mosquito. No. Not even the whole mosquito, just a part of it. A wing. A wing of a mosquito. You know, these mosquitoes, they cause malaria and all these other kind of diseases and what have you. It is not even worth that much. Rasulullah did not fear poverty for this woman. He did not. You just have to look around the Muslim world. They're actually rich. 
The Muslims are rich. They, they're weak, but they are rich. They are rich. Just look at the Arab world. They are rich, filthy rich, all the oil. But this, this wealth, it does not avail them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. Qarun had wealth. Fir'aun had wealth. Haman had wealth. These were all contemporaries of Fir'aun. Qarun had so much wealth that his keys to open the safes of his, of his wealth and his treasures needed to be carried by 10 people or more. That's how big and heavy they were, the keys. The keys have to be carried by many people at one time, just one key. That's how rich he was. Now, do you think that just because Allah gave someone so much wealth, or gave us so much wealth, or gave this person and not you, do you think that is an indication of the love of Allah for a certain person? No. Allah gives wealth to those whom He loves and He doesn't love. But he gives the deen and the akhirah to only those who he loves. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Rabbana atina fi dunya There are people who say, Rabbana atina fi dunya wa ma lahu fi al-akhiratu min khalaq They love this dunya so much, they only make dua to Allah about the dunya. Rabbana atina fi dunya O Allah, O our Lord, give us in this life. Allah says about these people, wa ma lahu fi al-akhiratu min khalaq That these people, they have no share of anything in the akhirah. Because they made all their objective only this life and they brought nothing forth for the next. And then Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا And there are some people who say, رَبَّنَا أَتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا Oh Allah, give us in this life حَسَنَا goodness. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا And in the hereafter, give us goodness. وَقِنَا عَذَابُ النَّارِ And save us from the punishment of the fire. أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبُ مِنْ مَعْكَسِ Oh Allah says, for these people, they will have something in the hereafter. Uh, for the Qisas, to give people, each people their account for what they have done or what they have failed to do. This is the life that you and me run after 60, 70 until we retire. And even after retirement, people do not want to think about that. You ask them, what, what do you plan to do after retirement? I'm going to go tour the world. I'm going to go to Paris, I'm going to go to Greece, I'm going to go to London, I'm going to go visit all the major cities. Okay, and then what are you going to do? They, you see that they keep planning and planning to enjoy this life to the maximum. Hubbud dunya, the love of this life. Wa kalahiyatul mawtin, they hate death to the maximum. They cannot even think about it, even though they are right at the doorsteps of death. Only Allah knows when someone will die. Someone can die at 20, and many people have died at 10, 15. But the life expectancy of this ummah, as Rasulullah said, is somewhere around 70. So when you are Above Sunday, you are living on borrowed time. And you are still running after. Some people I know, they don't even retire, even if they still. I know people who are working at 93, 93 years old. They're still working 93 years old. And they're not even using a cane. They're walking fine. They're sick once in a while, but they're still working. 93 years old. Still working, collecting wealth. And this person, he has enough money amassed. He doesn't have to work but still collecting, still collecting, still collecting, still collecting. So much so that Rasulullah says nothing will satisfy the hunger of the son of Adam for his life except dirt. What does this mean? What does this mean? When you are buried in your grave and the dirt is thrown upon you, only then will you be satisfied with one time. Only the dirt of this earth, what is put into your mouth, only then you will be okay with what you have. Meaning you will never stop chasing this life. You will continue to chase and chase and chase right until you drop dead. And you will forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make this life a home for you. And He told us so too many times in the Quran. This life is only a small, a short, fleeting luxury. And then the akhirah is the, the house of eternity or the place of eternity. This, this life is nothing but a, a deceptive trap from the shaitan. This life is nothing but a deceptive trap from the shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us so, so many times, but we're still running after it, regardless of all the signs that has come to us. Regardless of all the warnings that has come to us. Regardless of how many people preach to us that this life is, is false. And I'm sure a lot of us have had 
family members or friends, immediate or extended family members who have passed away. Who have passed away? What do you think has happened to them? Where do you think they are now? Why don't we take some time and think about what's happening to them in their grave? And that we are heading in the same direction. And that we are heading in the same direction. Umar bin Khattab in one of his conquests, one of his generals, they opened the gates of Rome, the Roman Empire. The two superpowers of the time was Persia and Rome. And Rome was conquered and Islam was spread in Rome. And what happened? All the treasures and the wealth, the jewels, the crown, all pure gold. They were sent back to Umar bin al-Khattab in the capital of Medina through a messenger from Rome. And when they presented these treasures to Umar bin al-Khattab, he began to cry. What a weird response. What an absurd reaction. If someone got you the winning lotto ticket and you won and they presented you with the money or the check and you started crying. This is not crying out of happiness. This is not tears of joy. This is tears of worry and stress and depression. What kind of reaction is that? What do you think the people will say? People don't react like that when they get money. We don't react like that when we get money. But Umar al Khattab began to cry. At such a point that he even became angry and he struck, or he struck the person who brought him the wealth. And, 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 and in the back, all the gold and stuff. And the gold and everything splattered on the floor, scattered all over the floor. And he ordered him to pick it up. And he got angry because he feared and it happened. What they prophesied happened. That once the door of wealth opens, all the fitna opens up. And that is what happened. Rasulullah SAW said he does not fear poverty for us, but he fears that the deen from us will be taken away. And if you look, all the conflicts around the world is really nothing more than the love of this life. How so? How so? If, if you look at it, all the imperialistic interventions around the world done by the powerful countries on the face of the earth, it is not really to spread democracy and freedom. That is a nice pretext which most of the foolish people buy into. It's a nice political song. It's a talking song. Because if that was the case, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Dubai, Egypt, all these other countries, dictatorship countries, with the worst human rights records, they wouldn't be in power today. But they are being propped up by the people who have an agenda. If freedom and democracy was really the point, how are they still lasting? Why certain countries, they invade, and other countries, they leave alone or they support? Because it is really to control their resources. It is about resources. It is about power. And why? Power, why? Because they love the land. They want to be in power. If you do not really care about this life, why would you run so much after it? Why would you give so much after it? Send your soldiers there to die just so they can control the full flow, flow of water in a certain way. Why? If you look at it, all these problems around the world is because people run after this life. They want power. They want money. They want wealth. That is why these problems happen. That is why these invasions and wars, the world has been plagued by such, because the people in the black suits upstairs, they are running after the light. They are running after, they have carved up the earth the way one carves a piece of pie. And they split it amongst themselves. I said, you guys take this, I take that, you take this. If you read history, you know that that's what the British and the Dutch and the French did to Africa. They called it the scramble of Africa, or for Africa. 
they took a map of Africa, complete foreigners, from a whole different, different continent, these Europeans. And what they did, they cut up the map of Africa, and they said, this is my part, that's your part, and that's your part. Complete foreigners coming, taking someone else's property, invading it, as if it's their own. Why? Because they love the life. The wars are because the, the pursuit of life and, and, and happiness in life and power. And this is a source of all the problems on a macro level, on a macro level, on the global level. When it comes to the micro level, meaning an individualistic level, it's a whole different set of implications. How many times have you seen where family members, they fight amongst each other because of nothing except this world? world? For instance, maybe one of the parents passed away. And I know this from personal experience. Two brothers are fighting to get possession of the father's house. And they take each other to court. I saw this with my own eyes happen. Family members, extended family members. They take each other to court to fight over the father's house after he's gone. They didn't like the will. They contested the validity of the will. They challenged the father's wishes. Why? Family members turning against each other, taking each other to court. Why? Because they love the akhirah? No. If you love the akhirah, you wouldn't do that. Because you wouldn't give value to this and give so much effort as you have done. You give value to your career. You give value to your education. And that is why you spend many sleepless nights for it. Because it is something in your eyes. It is something worth giving that effort. But you cannot be giving the same effort for this life because it is not worth that. Our efforts have been misdirected. Have been distracted from the real thing and is being channeled towards the wrong thing. That is what has happened to us. And we hate to die because we did not prepare adequately for the hereafter. We did not prepare adequately for the hereafter. Even though messengers have come to us. Allah says, Alam yatikum rusulun minkum. Has not messengers come to you? Yatluna alikum ayat rabbikum. They recited the verses of Allah. Wa yundirunakum liqa ayyumikum hadha. And they warned you about the meaning of this day. When you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you have to present to them? You know, when you have performance evaluations at your job, quarterly evaluations, they evaluate your performance. They want to see what you accomplished, what you have you done. If you work at a company or you work in a business, what kind of revenues have you brought? Are we in the plus? Are we in the negative? What have you brought? What did you bring to the table? When we are evaluated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, what can we present to Him besides running after this life Following our animalistic urges. These are our lower urges, by the way. We have to control these urges. These are animalistic urges. When you do not think and you just follow your emotions, this is what happens. Logically, we know we're going to die. But we don't really believe in it until dirt enters our mouth. Even when one of our own family members or close friends die, we feel sad for a week, for two weeks, for three weeks. But after that, we forget the reality of death and once again go back to our normal selves and run after this life as if nothing has happened. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from such a thing. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Marin that you fed one and the line back. Allah makes it absolutely clear that whatever is with us will perish and whatever is with Allah is eternal. Allah says, that you love to amass your wealth in gatherings, in piling after piling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-A'la that that you love the, this life. You yearn for this life. But the hereafter is better for us 
and everlasting for us. Why can't we not get it in our hearts that this life is the exact opposite of the hereafter? You know how in a movie or in a story you have a protagonist and you have an antagonist. You have the main good character and then you have the main evil character. And what happens? They fight. They oppose each other. There's always a battle. This akhirah is the exact, the akhirah of the hereafter is the exact opposite or antagonist of this life, a protagonist of this life. Exact opposite. You cannot run after both at the same time. It wasn't meant that way. Allah says, Man Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give two hearts in one man. Light and darkness cannot coexist. Physically, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about in terms of philosophy that truth and falsehood. No, I mean physically. When you turn on a flashlight, it's not dark there anymore because light and darkness do not coexist. The light expels the darkness. You do not see light and darkness in the same spot at the same time. It doesn't work. Physics wise, it doesn't work that way. When you have photons somewhere, you cannot have the absence of photons. It cannot be cold and hot at the same time. You cannot have whiteness and blackness at the same time. So how do we think that we can have both in our hands the akhirah and the hereafter at the same time? How does that make sense? Does that logically make sense? And this is the reality of the situation. And no matter how much logic someone brings, after a while we still fall victim to our animalistic urges. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to see the dunya for what it really is. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to see the akhirah for what it really is. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the trap of this life. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the deception of this life. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barakana fi man aatayt, wa qina wa sahanna bi rahmatika sharwa ma qadayt, fa inna kitaqwi subhanaka wa la yitwa alayk, inna hu la yitillu man wa alayk, wa la yahizu man alayk, tabaraka rabbana wa ta'ala. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك وأقم الصلاة والحمد لله